Welcome GRD 130 to our exercise for colorization using a Photoshop-like application called Photopea. And what we're going to do first is we're going to read about the history of Photoshop. I'm sure everybody's heard about Photoshop. I used Photoshop since version 3.0. Matter of fact, we used to have that in the Mac Lab when I first started teaching in 1997. We had Photoshop 3.0 in the Mac lab and that was the first Photoshop that actually had layers and layers is what really makes Photoshop powerful because you can build on top of things and composite images meaning you're layering images on top of each other to make it look like one image even in the lab I remember we had 3.0 I think we might have had 4 we had 5.5 five, and I think then we had CS3 maybe or CS4 and now we have CS6 in the lab and we still haven't converted over to Creative Cloud because it's very expensive uh, for the subscription rate to have in the lab for you know 19 computers or whatever but read this and I'll have a little quiz on it so that I know you read it and you also <laughs> get some background on Photoshop if you've ever used it but it's for photo editing now we're not going to use Photoshop because not everybody has Photoshop but we're going to use something called Photopea it might also be called Photop because it's P-E-A like a P but I always have called it Photopea I may be wrong but I'm going to keep calling it Photopea and it's very Photoshop like it has many of the same tools it uses the same terminology layers um, operations everything is very Photoshop like there's very little I can't do in here that I can do in Photoshop so what's nice about it too is it's free and it's online it's in a browser so you don't have to download anything you don't even have to create an account even though it says account here you don't even have to create an account and as they keep improving it you can now save a PSD version which is Photoshop document which is a native Photoshop file you can save a native PSD and save it down to your computer and it'll be saving as you work. So it's just like working off your hard drive. And if you had any problem, you could also save it to Google Drive and work off of Google Drive. And when you're done, you can export this as a JPEG, which is a flattened version. And when I say flattened version, I mean this version here that we're going to work on has a bunch of layers. I have a layer for hair. I'll turn that off. I have a layer for lips. I'll turn it off. Eye makeup. Turn it off. Skin. Turn it off shirt turn it off and BG I'll turn it off and that's how it started so we're gonna go find an image on Google this is the one I used the 1600 by 2000 image and then we're gonna crop it and work on it in Photopea we could just copy and paste it so it'll be pretty easy to do and we're gonna just crop the head and then we're gonna colorize it and make different layers here and I started basically with the shirt the easiest part and I think I did it purple first and then I'll show you a way that if you need to change the color or edit the color later and you can't match up the same color you could just colorize the whole layer and then I created a background which was easy to do and I just did like kind of a beigey peachish skin color as far as what I know about Marilyn Monroe and did some eye makeup just to kind of make it a little more glamorous and considering she's probably wearing makeup so added a little more kind of pastel pinks and a little bit of purples to the eyes and below the eyes a little bit I'll zoom in there so you could see what, what I did and then I did the lips and in everything you do you have to try and make sure you're not doing it too over the top because it looks like we don't need lips on her so she looks like a drag queen or anything like that so uh, that's what it looks like first when I first did it the lips and I had it 100 percent you know they look like that so I turned down the opacity so if you ever do anything that's too intense you could just turn it down it looks a little more natural and then finally the last thing we did was the hair and if that looks too intense you could turn that down too matter of fact it's already down to 46 percent you could even turn it down more so it doesn't look so yellowish and you can change the color after but I thought this would be fun to do instead of just painting a barn with a sky and a you know grass and the red barn which we did in another class but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to kind of work on layers a little bit and you don't have to be perfect about it your grade doesn't depend on how well you edit this it's just to give you some experience of doing this if you haven't done any colorization and it's fairly easy to do so I'll go over that after showing this little introduction here and again I can save it here so I'm just gonna go file save and save what I did I already saved it down to my hard drive somewhere on my computer but if you're on a Chromebook or anything like that you can also go to file save more and they have PSD to storage so you can go use Google Drive or OneDrive or anything else and log in and actually save uh, incrementally from there so I'll X out of this so this will be a little lesson using a Photoshop clone I guess we'll call it that a web-based version of Photoshop 
that's called Photopea, and it's a really cool application. I've used it for online classes, and I use it myself, and I really like it. Uh, the only downside is it uh, shows ads over here if that bothers you, so sometimes the interface isn't perfect. Sometimes the lines, when you try to highlight things and select things, the little dotted line things, uh, when I make a marquee like that, it's really hard to see, especially when I record videos. Uh, as it is in Photoshop, Photoshop it's a little more apparent to see these dotted lines. So that's the only issue I've had with Photopea, but they always seem to be improving things as they go. So uh, this will be nice to work on, hopefully give you something different than working in Gravit. So we'll get started right now. I'll start it right from the beginning to show you what to do, but also make sure you read the history of Photoshop because I'll have a quiz on that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is close this up so we could start from the beginning. And you could certainly search Marilyn Monroe, search for images, look for something black and white. That's what I did here. If you're not sure what she looks like, <laughs> that's what she looks like. So there's not a whole lot of pink makeup, but that's not a bad, bad picture to kind of see what her color looks like a little bit. We'll try to match that up. So I, I guess I was okay with the red lips and that kind of purplish shirt that I had on, something like that. So we're going to use this one because I've used this before in another class. So it's kind of a nice iconic kind of image. Now I'm going to go and open up Photopea. So I'm going to go to Photopea, or if you want to call it Photop. There it is, Photopea. And again, you don't have to create an account like Gravit. You could just go right there. And before you create anything, what I'm going to do is copy my image because then when you make a new image, it'll make it the same size. So I'm going to go here and just copy the image, even though we're going to crop it. I'm going to copy it. So I'm in Google Chrome and I'll right click and choose copy image. Now you could save it down and then open it from Photopea, but I'm just going to copy the image and then I'll go to Photopea and you can go to new project here or just go to file new and it, it is a new project and you could name it here and I'll just call it GRD 130 Marilyn and put your last name first initial so that way I can know it's yours when I see it. So I'll just put home R. You could put your last name first initial there. And it'll put a .psd after it. You don't have to put it here. Now notice because I copied the image first, it's making this width 1600 height 2046, the same as the image. And you could just hit create. And you might say, well, where's Marilyn? Well, I have to paste it because remember I copied. And you can do edit paste. And on a Mac, it's command V. And if you're on Windows, it's control V. And there it is. And if you want to crop it, there's a couple ways to crop it. I'm going to use a crop tool here. It's the third one down. And if you're ever missing something, uh, you could hold down on the bottom right corner of a tool and look around because they always have other tools inside here. So I know for another exercise we used in another class, people couldn't find the, the marquee tool. But if you hold down on the right side, there's other tools here. But we're going to use the crop tool. So that should be uh, available right now and you grab these little handles they may be hard to see but you'll see this double arrow and I'm just gonna grab this and move it up and just kinda crop off to her shoulders and just kinda crop it in where her shoulders kinda round off a little bit almost a little more of a square shape something like that it looks like it's, it's telling me 13 by 13 inches something like that that's fine and you know if you wanna have it a little longer that's fine and then now that you have this little box that's your crop area, you can just hit enter or return. And there it is. Now it's cropped. Now you can't see the PSD on here because I made a longer name, but you can save it at any point. When you see an asterisk, it means it's not saved. Now I can't see it. I probably shouldn't have made it so long, but I'll double click on it because I'm not seeing it. I should have probably not put the GRD. And actually, let me take away the GRD and hit OK. Okay, so I'm not I'm still not seeing the asterisk there, but what you want to do, even though we just got it started, is you want to go File, Save as PSD. And it'll tell me to save it uh, to anywhere on my computer. I could save it on my desktop, downloads, wherever you want it. You, you, if you have a folder for GRD 130, you can. I think I do. Here's a folder for GRD 130. And I'll just save it in there. I have a resources folder with all kinds of stuff. So it's called Marilyn dash homo r that's my last name first initial dot psd psd is a photoshop document even though we're not working in photoshop it's saving in the native photoshop format which means it'll save with layers as opposed to a jpeg which will just be flattened we'll have layers because already we have one layer here and we can name layers so i could double click on here right on the layer name and i'll just call it marilyn 
BW, black and white. And again, if you can't save down, I'm not sure on Chrome, if you can save to your hard drive or whatever, or if you need to save to the web, you can go file, save more, and do it to storage. And if you have a Google Drive account or a OneDrive account, you could do it like that. You can also, I think, just download it to your uh, downloads, export it to keep working, and then just export it to your downloads as a PSD, and then you can open it up again if you need. Because um, I know you can download, but just keep in mind that you can go here and go to Google Drive. If you have a Google Drive account, load Google Drive, log into your account. I have a couple accounts for Google, a school account, and a personal account, so you could do that as well. So if you have any issue doing that, uh, just let me know or if you have any questions even before you start if you're like I'm in a Chromebook and I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I, I don't have much access to a Chromebook my kids have Chromebooks but I I'm not sure exactly how they do this kind of stuff so I'd have to double check again so anyway as long as we have it saved here and this won't take long this won't this won't take days to work on it took me 20 minutes to do the example that I showed you so I have this layer here that we're going to work over top of. So we're going to keep making new layers and we'll start easy first with something like the shirt. Now also when we're working in here to zoom in and zoom out, they have view here and you can go to zoom in and zoom out and if you look it has command plus, command minus. Now the first plus it just means the two keys. They all, they all have that plus there. Uh, but it's command plus and command minus on a Mac, control plus, control minus on Windows. And I, you could also use your, your trackpad to kind of pinch. I'm pinching and zooming in here, although sometimes that moves too fast. It might be easier to just do Command Plus and zoom in or whatever. Uh, there's also a zoom tool down here that you can click into areas like that, and I think you hold Alt or Option to zoom out. So if you wanted to go into her lips, you could click right there and zoom into her lips, hold Option, and zoom out. So I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit so I see her shirt. You might as well fill up, fill up your screen not too much, you don't want to be cropped off, but something like that's fine. So I'll just kind of move over and I'll make a new layer. We're not going to do anything on this layer, on the Marilyn layer, so make sure you're not painting on there. And I'm going to go down here, there's a little thing that looks like a page next to the trash can with a dog ear. I'm going to click on it and it's called layer one and there's nothing on it. Whenever you see that kind of gray, gray and white uh, checkerboard and if I option click on it, there it is. There's my layer and there's nothing there. It just means it's transparent. It's like a transparent piece of film. So that's what I'm going to be painting on right now, and I'll double click on the name layer one, and I'll just call it shirt or blouse. When well, I guess blouse would be more appropriate if, if I spelled blouse right. And I'm just going to paint maybe a purple color. So I'm going to go here to the paintbrush, and again, if you ever don't see it, make sure you hold down on the bottom right corner and look for anything else. So if you're like, I see a pencil, I don't see a paintbrush, or I see a clone tool, which we use for retouching, make sure we just use the paintbrush. And the color you're going to paint with is actually the foreground color down here. If you can see down here, this color, there's like a grayish color and a black color. And if you click on here, you can make it default black and white. And if there's a little double arrow, you could flip them back and forth. Well, I'll just make it default black and white. That means I'd be painting with black. So I'd be painting black over her blouse right now, and I don't want to. So you could double click on this color on the black. And if you want to make her blouse purple, just go find a purple color. And you might say, well, where's purple? Well, this, this thing here is the spectrum, so you could go kind of in the purple spectrum, you know, more pinkish, more bluish up here, and if you want a kind of a dark purple, you could go in here, and you can make it, uh, you know, more saturated, meaning it's a brighter color, or more desaturated, which is closer to gray. Now, keep in mind, we can turn down the opacity, so if you go a little oversaturated, that's okay, so I'll kind of make a darker purple down here, I'll hit OK, and to paint with my brush, Here's the brush settings here. Now it has size. Now you can use this slider. And there's also hardness, which when the hardness is up all the way, it has a hard edge. And I'll leave the hard edge on for now. You could always turn that down. Like if you're doing your hair, you might want to have a softer edge. But I'll, I'll leave it up, maybe 95 something. It doesn't matter. The softer edge means it's be blurrier around the edge. Now I just accidentally painted that, but that's okay. Let me just let me just paint on there. And you might say, well, that doesn't look very good. What are you going to do? Just turn down the opacity and uh, I could, but that's not really what I want. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go on that layer, there's the blouse layer, and change the mode from normal and scroll down and put it in color mode. And what that does is it lets the highlights and the darks come through. So it does a colorizing kind of mode. So it's not just turning down the opacity, it's actually 
colorizing it. So it lets the, the highlights and the darks show through. So I'm actually going to go in here and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so I can go around these edges. Now if your brush is too big now, you can use your bracket, your left bracket next to the letter P on your keyboard and that'll make it smaller and if you use your right bracket it'll make it bigger. So you could always do that instead of having to go up here. I, so just use those keys on your keyboard to make your brush bigger or smaller and you might have to zoom in to see it. So I'll just kind of I could click here, I don't have to paint and you don't have to be perfect about it. I mean, I'm not going to grade you on how perfect you did it. And I'll go around here and kind of move around her shirt. Now I'll zoom out so I can see a little bit better here. And, and you can see the dark areas won't show up because they're going to stay fairly dark. So if I went over that a little bit, that's okay. And I'll zoom out a little bit. And I'll keep working on her shirt. And I'm just kind of just painting kind of roughly here on my trackpad. And if you miss areas, not a big deal. And I'll get it as good as I can. I'm not going to be super detailed about it. And again, you can make your brush smaller to get into these smaller areas around her head. And again, if it looks too purple, or if you screw something up, you can use your eraser. There's an eraser here. And I'll just kind of, I got some on her neck, I'll just erase it. And then I'll go back to my paintbrush and put areas back in here. So I'm just painting by hand, fairly easy. Uh, I could turn off everything and see what I did. If I turn off the background, I could see what I did. This is, this is what I painted. So if you see areas that you missed, that's what I did. So I'll turn on that again, and I'll turn on the white background even though I don't need that. So that looks okay. And if it's too intense, go to your opacity and just tone it down a little. So that's her blouse. And then what I'll do next is I'll do this kind of, I don't know, it looks like kind of wood siding here. And I'll do, you could do a brown color, you could do a gray. On the other one, I think I did a gray. So I'll make sure I add a layer first. Make sure you do this. And if you haven't saved, you could go here and go file save. If you have to get up and do something else, you know, uh, save it. So I'll go down here and I'll add a new layer with this again. And this layer I'll just call background. I'll just call BG because I already have a background that's behind here that's white. So I won't call it background, I'll just call BG because I'm doing this here. So I'm gonna make my brush nice and big and I'll zoom in a little bit more because uh, I, I don't, there's not a lot of detail here. And I'm using my right bracket to do that. Now I'll double click in here and I'll look for kind of a bluish, I could go on blue and then look for kind of blue gray. Or you could try brown. If you want it brown, go into like an orangey color and go here if you wanted to do kind of a beigey kind of color you could do that but I'm going to do a cool color so it sets off her hair a little bit so I'll go back to blue use a blue color you know if you want it purplish blue whatever I'll kind of do it in here and just kind of a gray blue just get a gray blue in here and I'll hit OK and I'll just start painting now again when you start painting it just looks solid and what you want to do when it looks solid is change this mode to color Go all the way down. It's the second last one, and it's the same way in Photoshop. And now that looks a little more realistic. And I'm going to try to not go around her hair real close. I'll just kind of get around there a little bit. I won't go right into her hair because I don't want to go over her hair. And I'll go around. Make sure I go down the edge. If you ever need to make a straight line, you could click once, hold shift, and click again. So whenever you need to make straight lines with a paintbrush or anything else in Photopea or Photoshop, you can do that. So. I'm not being real careful about this blue stuff around here, but I'm trying not to get in too, too close to her hair, and I'll show you why. And I'll make my brush smaller down here. And those are my new puppies, you hear, if you can hear them in the background. They, they didn't get the notice that I'm recording a video, so they're, they're making some noise. But I don't, I don't think I'll be able to stop them. All right, so I'm pretty tight around her hair here. I don't have to worry too much about it. And what I wanted to show is that you can also, as you're painting, if you want to take down the opacity, you can actually paint with a lighter opacity. That way, you can kind of paint over her hair a little bit, and it won't be as intense. And if you keep painting back and forth, it'll kind of get darker as you go. So I'll just do a lighter opacity, kind of almost 60 or 50% as I go over her hair here. So it's a little lighter 
going around her hair and that way I can overlap her hair a little bit. You could even take the brush um, hardness down so it's got a softer brush as you go around her hair too so it's not so sharp even though it's not really looking uh, that sharp around her hair. So I'll just kind of fill in some of these areas here with kind of the semi-transparent blue around here and this I could put back up now since I'm doing this over here I'll put it I'll put it back up higher over here and just do the best I can and make the brush real small to go in here and what's nice too is the hair will go over top of this so I think we'll be okay when we're working on the hair layer so so that's the background layer and that looks pretty good I'll zoom out a little bit and again if that blue is too intense which it probably is you can just go to the BG layer go to opacity and just turn it down just kinda of make it a little more faded and that looks okay and you, you could change the color if you want if you wanted to change the color background let's see if this works if you go to layer make sure you're on the BG layer if you go to layer layer style and you go to color overlay I'll move this out of the way it just made it red now I don't want it red maybe I want to click on this red thing and make it kind of a beigey brown or something something like that I'll hit OK and now it kind of looks like that and I think I can go here and even put it on color again so it kind of does that color overlay just like we're doing on the layer but now it's doing it as a layer style so if you did something like that then you just change the background and again this is an effect if I go over here on the layer there's a little arrow and it shows me the effect and its color overlay if you don't like it if you're like oh I liked it better blue just turn it off If you want to see it on if you want to show people the difference just click it on and off so there's kind of the beigey background and there's the blue I'll leave on the blue I'll turn off the effects for now but I just wanted to show you you can do that and you could do that with the shirt anything else you could change your hair color and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do her face then we're going to do her eyes, some eye makeup, we'll do her lips, and then her hair. And I'll do that in part two because I don't want to make this video super long. And I'll save what I'm doing here. And remember, use the save here. Don't use the save up here. Don't go up into Chrome and try to save things. Make sure you use this interface and go File, Save. And it should have already been saved to your hard drive. And I'm going to come back in part two and finish up her skin, her hair, her eyes, and her lips.